Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Beginner to Master Speed Run, episode number 22. Uh, have a fun one in episode 21, a lot of interesting games. I was in trouble in uh, the last game I played, but managed to get out of it. So currently on a 73 game win streak, rated 1183. So maybe I can break 1200 in this episode. Uh, let's just hop into it. Playing Marsemi who is also trying to break 1200, rated 11.99, and still staying with the same opening repertoire. Um, at some point, I will probably start mixing up the openings, but um, yeah, still following basic principles, controlling the center, defending the pawn. Uh, we've seen a, a mix of different openings that White's played in this series. D4 is a scotch. Uh, I'll take the pawn. Taking is really the only good move. Otherwise, white will build up the space. And here there's a couple moves. Uh, knight of six and bishop c5 are the two most common moves by far. Uh, some players make the mistake of taking, which just allows white to dominate the center with the queen. So I'll play bishop c5 here, simply developing and attacking the knight again. And after bishop e3, uh, white is threatening to take which would win material because my bishop on c5 is not defended. Uh, so the best move here is actually to play queen f6. And there's a lot of openings where you shouldn't develop the queen early, but this is an exception to that rule where the queen uh, helps pressure various points in white's position. White defended the knight with c3. And I think from here, I'll keep developing uh, knight g7. Um, because the queen's taking the f6 square, the knight can develop here, uh, reinforcing this knight. And now if takes on c6, the knight's not actually hitting the queen, so I could then take on e3. Um, but white plays queen d2, a solid looking move. And I played this opening a lot from the black side growing up, also occasionally from the white side, but I don't actually know like so much specific theory here. Uh, so I think I'll just be following basic principles. Uh, I do want to keep an eye out for bishop g5, but then I have queen g6, and the queen should be very fine there. Uh, so let's go ahead and castle. I guess now I should note that if takes, then I don't want to take on e3, because then white could take with check, and I would be losing a piece in that line, because white would then take back. So if takes here, the queen can take and defend the bishop. Um, very important to make sure that uh, I'm not losing material in, in white's forcing lines. So generally, white should develop this bishop and look to castle kingside. Uh, the bishop has a choice between a few options. Uh, but bishop d3 might leave the knight less defended because um, it would obstruct the queen. So probably anticipating bishop e2 or bishop c4 here. But of course, there's other moves. I mean, we might see bishop g5 or knight takes e6. So the ball is in white's court. We see bishop c4. Yeah, this is a more active move. Uh, of course, aligning with my king. Now, it is a question how I want to complete development. Um, there's cases where black likes to get in d5 right away. Um, d5 in this position, I think just loses a pawn. So not a move I really want to spend too much time on. Uh, d6 is probably the most natural move to open the bishop. There's also a move like knight e5 to centralize and attack this bishop. So I'll take a moment here. I kind of like the idea of knight e5 right away because then there's ideas of knight g4 and maybe it gets a little bit awkward for white with the bishop on e3. I guess I should also note here that I could consider this move to attack both pawns, uh, but then I guess f3 would defend, defending e4 and defending g2 with the queen. So, I mean, a lot of Fine options. I'm going to go for knight e5, though. This looks to be one of the more aggressive approaches. 
see what white wants to do with this bishop. I mean, maybe the bishop should move back to save it or save the bishop and also prevent knight to g4. And if we see this, then I'll probably continue with d6, um, also supporting g4. I mean, very often when a bishop is developed e3, this knight move could cause some troubles. But white uh, not defending, but rather counterattacking. So my queen is hit. And there's a few options here. I could consider taking the bishop. Probably the first move I should look at. It might get messy because after bishop takes f6, knight takes d2, bishop takes e7. Have to keep track of the material situation. I would have knight takes b1 in that line. But after bishop takes c5, it's kind of a long sequence where I think at the end my knight is going to be trapped and I don't think black is for choice there. But I should also, I mean, I should look at the branches. So takes, 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 takes. I could take back, white will take back. And it's a fair trade where I'll have two bishops against two knights in a way more simplified position. So, yeah, I think taking is, is very playable. I mean, I could also move here, and the knight's still defended by the bishop. I guess, do I want to keep the tension, or do I want to go for trades and liquidate a little bit? Um, time is running a bit low. I'm realizing that after this move, I'm still attacking the bishop. And I'm attacking the pawn. I mean, e4 and g2 are still undefended. It's kind of hard to calculate because, yeah, white might have a few moves in response, but intuitively, I think I like this move better. Just because my, my position is a bit more solid and white's position just looks very vulnerable. Um, like, even this bishop... So it's defended by the queen. If white plays a move like bishop d3 to defend the pawn, then the queen would be overworked defending two bishops. I can take on d3 and then take on g5. So it's possible I'll be winning material here. We see bishop to b3, saving the bishop, allowing me to take the pawn with check. And yeah, I do have to be careful with my queen just smack in the center, but it's doing a lot of damage to White's position. And uh, also attacking the pawn on g2. So maybe we'll see king f1. I mean, sometimes these positions just get sharp very quickly. I mean, this opening uh, features the early tension where, where there's uh, the early fireworks. So trying to get the better of White here. Uh, Queen e2 is played. So I could take, which leaves a knight undefended, but attacks a rook, also attacks a bishop. Now I also have knight d3 here, which will force the king to move because the queen is pinned. I think after knight d3, king f1, that only helps white. I think I'm much better off taking on g2. It's a crazy position. A lot of things are attacked, but again, I think uh, I'm getting the better of the craziness here. And if white takes either knight, I can start by taking with check, going up material. And if we see rook f1, then I can take the bishop. So yeah, not sure what to expect here from white. I've already taken a lot of time. It's taken more more than half my time. Eleven moves in, but I mean, sometimes when things get complicated from early on, you do want to invest the time to uh, to come up with the right moves. So we'll be having to move a little bit quicker going forward. You see, Queen F one. So yeah, this is a good sign. I can take the bishop going up material. And now there's really no worries in the position. Some idea of queen c1. 
I guess the only small worry is F4 is a fork, but then uh, there'd be a few options. F4, maybe I could take on F4 and then knight d3 eventually with a counter fork. But here, okay, knight d3. Knight d3 is interesting because the queen is tied down to the rook. But there's also queen c1, which looks very powerful. I'm going to go for queen c1. Attacking the king, attacking b2. White has two legal moves here, bishop d1 or king e2. And now I can take a pawn with check, attacking the rook. White can save the rook with knight c2, blocking the check and defending. Or knight d2, okay, defending with the queen. Um, I guess the drawback of knight d2 is it leaves c3 undefended. But do I want to take on c3? I mean, I still have to watch out for white's alignment against my king. For now, it's not a huge concern. I think I'm more inclined to take the knight first. And then after takes, I can take on d4. Centralize the queen. Uh, maybe we'll see queen g2 threatening checkmates. But then there will be ways to, to cope. Um, something like knight g6. And the strategy going forward from here is to start exploiting the king, try and get the rest of the pieces into play. And the knight would like to come to f4, rook would like to come to e8, even the bishop can come in. But uh, yeah, first things first, let's not get checkmated. The knight is a defender, would very soon like to be an attacker, threatening knight f4. And okay, this is interesting because I can start with knight f4. I think I will. Very important that this is check, otherwise I, I would lose the game instantly. And yeah, white just resigns. Um, I mean, if white played, I guess the only legal moves were king here, here, then I was ready to take the rook with check and then eventually regain the, or just win the queen or, uh, or go for some mating attack. So, Okay, um, a very sharp game from early on. Uh, hopefully there's some lessons to take away. I mean, with this opening, it's very possible for black to get in trouble early on if, if black's not accurate. Maybe queen d2 was a little bit slow. Uh, I think the, the main lines are either bishop c4 or bishop e2. And then usually white should castle as quickly as possible, so g2 is defended. But what happened in the game, uh, like once I played knight e5, and then I think bishop g5 was actually the blunder, allowing me to get just a lot of a lot of attacks. And yeah, there's no easy way for white to defend everything here. So nice game to start the episode. A nice way to show how to take down the scotch opening from early on. So let's keep it going. Rated 1191. Uh, another 10 minute game playing T Pack from Canada. And I'll go for E4. And we have a Karo Khan. Um, I'm going to go for the two knights attack, which is one of my favorite weapons against the Karo Khan. I, I played this a few episodes ago. I made a whole video about this opening a few years ago, which I will link below. Uh, D4 is one of the more aggressive moves which gains space early, gains time on this knight. And I'll be moving this knight uh, for the third time in the first five moves. Uh, but one of the points of, of going for this from the white side is the knights are, are generally pretty happy here. They can be attackers later in the middle game. They can also help keep my king side very safe. Uh, with bishop g4, this is a, a pin. But I don't really have to go for h3 right away. Uh, the move I'm going to go for here is bishop to c4. And this is setting up tactics involving bishop takes f7 and then knight e5 or g5, which black very smartly prevents uh, e6 creating the pawn chain against the bishop. So yeah, unfortunately, I won't have any like, oh no, my queen tactics in, in this game, at least most likely. 
but I can keep developing. Uh, there's d3, there's castling, there's h3. I don't think it makes a huge difference which move I play first. I'll start with d3, getting ready to develop my final minor piece. And yeah, pretty soon I'll, I'll probably go for h3, which should induce the trade on f3. And it is nice kind of forcing this piece off the board early on. You can activate the queen. And the queen is very happy here. Uh, there's already a lot of pieces in my position aimed towards black's kingside. So if black castles kingside, I think there will be a lot of attacking potential. Now, in going forward, I still probably want to castle kingside. And there's cases where even if I castle kingside, I can still attack on that side later on. And black castles, so showing, showing no fear. And yeah, I'm definitely um, inclined to try and orchestrate some sort of kingside attack. I mean, moves like bishop g5 or knight h5 come to mind. Also something like e5, which would remove the knight, unleash the queen. Uh, e5 would run into knight d5, so I'm not sure if I want to give back the square. Uh, let me take a moment to consider my options. Uh, another idea is to somehow move my queen off the f-file so I can get my pawn rolling with f4. It's very nice to, to expand with f4 and then later f5 so the bishop and rook can play a role. Uh, and maybe the way to do that is to start with knight h5, offer the knight trade, and my queen lands on h5, then the pawn can start rolling. I think I prefer that more than bishop g5. Like even though bishop g5, it's developing the final minor piece. After a move like h6, I don't really think I want to trade it off. And it's kind of awkward moving back where it's kind of fighting for the g3 square with the knight. So I'm going to go for knight h5. Yeah, just offering the trade of knights, trying to remove one of the main defenders on black's king side. And if black doesn't take here right away, then uh, yeah, then maybe I can take and put the queen on g3 and then still go for expansion. Black is going for b5. So, I mean, if I want to, I could play a4. I could also just allow it and drop the bishop back eventually. I'm trying to imagine a scenario where I allow b5 and then get in this move, maybe with inclusion of taking. But um, I don't think I want to overthink things. So I'm just going to go ahead and take first. Expecting bishop takes. And yeah, I want to play queen g3. But I also don't really want to give black the opportunity to play b5 and then maybe later prepare c4. So I'm going to start with a4 here. A uh, very simple preventive move. It's very common uh, to do this when the opponent is threatening to expand, just to uh, slow them down. Uh, knight c6 makes sense. Developing, threatening knight e5 to fork the queen and bishop. So let's slide over to g3. I mean, so far, this is a, a very solid game. For most sides, um, black has really done nothing wrong and is exerting pressure now on the queen side. So now I should probably just retreat. Like There's really no other way to defend the pawn other than bishop b3. And this move might allow black to play b5. And b5 will lead to some, uh, some trades potentially with pawns and rooks. I'm still looking to consider ideas like e5 and f4, also bishop h6 in the, the near future. So we see rook c8. Yeah, it looks like black is preparing b5 and then wants to get in a quick c4. So there's a few options. I could play a5 to really clamp down, and then at b5 there's en passant. 
Or I could go for my own play on the king side. If I play a move like e5, um, I mean, if the bishop moves back to e7, then I have bishop h6. It looks like that would win material, because black would have to play g6 and I win the rook. So I'm thinking that after e5, black will have to play bishop h4. Then I play queen g4. I'm trying to determine if it's worth committing the pawn here. I think it is, though, because then, yeah, the bishop's going to still be a target. I'll be threatening bishop h6. And a move like f5 leaves this pawn hanging. Let's go for e5. Um, slight change in plans. My original plan was to play f4, f5. But I'm liking this move because it's removing the bishop from its defensive square on f6. And yeah, once it moves away, then g7 is going to be a bit more vulnerable. Okay, the bishop moves back very quickly, and now I can get in bishop h6. So now it looks like yeah, black has to play g6. And I'm not sure if I even want to take the rook, because bishop is really nice here. Uh, but I probably do, because if I allow rook e8, then black will be looking to play bishop f8. So let's go ahead and take. I do have to watch my time. But uh, yeah, nice victory, winning material in the middle game. And now let's keep expanding. I'm going to go for f4 here. Still looking to get this break in, because this, this pawn break is a move that would favor or make the bishop and rook happier. Um, I'm trying to exploit the fact that g-pawn is pinned. But here I have to watch out for knight e3 with a fork. So let's just trade. Happy to remove the knight. And now I'm going to play pawn b3, trying to just ensure that black is not creating any issues on the queen side with c4 break. So some prophylactic pawn moves on the queen side. And yeah, the plan going forward is to really focus on the king side. Ideally, put the rook probably on e1 and then either go for f5 immediately, assuming I maintain the pin, or gradually build up with moving the queen and then g4, f5. So yeah, it looks like everything is under control. Black still goes for c4, so this is a on sacrifice, um, I'm taking it. I mean, this is really the reason why I played b3. It's to ensure that I can take a pawn on c4. And this has opened the file for the rook, which, yeah, let's put the rook on the half open file, targeting the pawn on b7. And this is actually a nice reason to have double pawns. So I have the the file to work with for the rook. Uh, black defends, so it's not going to be easy to, to win the pawn on that file. f5 would lose this pawn, so let's go for some more gradual improvement. Queen f3. Uh, maybe looking to play queen b7, which would basically be a triple attack, attacking the two pawns and the rook. Black is leaving the b-pawn undefended, but attacking my a-pawn. Yeah, let's go for queen b7. Triple attack. Black is going to have to save the rook here. And then, then I'll have a choice which pawn to capture. Uh, probably the a-pawn first to defend this pawn. I guess I could have taken here to attack the rook as well. But yeah, looking to take your next move. Bishop b4. This does obstruct the rook, but now it's walking into queen takes b6. Just cleaning up the queen side, attacking the bishop and the rook. There is a move here for Bach to save both pieces. I think the only move is bishop to e7. Now, yeah, things are looking very good. Uh, I'm very close to trapping the queen, like rook a1, 
It doesn't quite trap the queen though, because there's queen c3. So I think from here, I just want to push the pawn and not get too low on time. This is now a pass pawn. And probably very soon I can move the rook to a1 to support the pawn. And it's very difficult for black to generate any counterplay. Although c2 is undefended. So am I okay with losing it? I think what I'll do here is just counterattack queen c7, attacking the bishop. The bishop's tied down to defending the rook. And I'm happy to abandon the pawn if I'm winning one of black's pieces here. Okay, bishop h4, that's a resourceful move. Maybe looking to come in and holding on to the rook. Um, I'm wondering if I can just play g3. It looks weakening, but there's really no way for black to immediately exploit my king. And if bishop takes g3, oh, that's, um, that's a move. Black's looking to check, but now I can take the bishop. And even if black gets in this move, something like king g2, there's enough... Uh, enough things around the king to prevent any perpetual check. Like queen e2, rook f2. The checks should run out. Yeah, now, now the queen is attacked, the rook is still attacked. There's no queen g4 check. So yeah, g3 was a nice way to basically dominate the bishop. There is nowhere safe to move it. And black, black is trying their best, but now the position is crumbling. Uh, king moves back, I'll have checkmate. If the king moves forward... Okay, if the king moves forward, I didn't see an immediate mate, but something like queen g5 would uh, would simplify. So I think that was a pretty smooth game. Um, hopefully a nice demonstration of how to play such a structure from the two knights attack against the Karo Khan, especially when black pushes, because black did grab space in the center, but I got some very nice harmony with the pieces. I mean, the setup is very solid where pretty much every minor piece for white has a, a nice square. And then later in the middle game, I um, was able to slow down Block's play while accelerating my play on the king side. e5, I think, was nice to drive the bishop away and then eventually win material. And the conversion was pretty smooth as well. So, okay, um, let's move on. Let's do at least one more game, rated 1197. Uh, hopefully we'll just take one more to break 1200. Here we go, playing Andreas. And this time I'm playing the white side of the king's pawn. And I'll play bishop c4. Standard Italian, Italian Giocco piano. This has a few names. Black playing very quickly. So I think I'll go for um, the Greco Gambit, which is starting with d4. It's an opening I played a few episodes ago, and it's an opening that I learned very early on in my childhood. Black's playing all the main moves. Although bishop takes is not the most common. Uh, usually it's knight takes e4. So we'll see what black is up to here. Uh, not trying to take the pawn, but rather castling. So going forward from here, I think it's already an opening success because I have the bishop pair, I have the center pawns, and I can grab space. Um, I don't think I want to castle and allow black to take. So let's go forward, just attacking the knight. I mean, if queen e7 or rook e8 to pin the pawn, then I'll very simply castle unpinning and attacking the knight. And with knight d5, yeah, black is attacking the c3 pawn. I'm wondering if it's possible to like try and trap the knight here. Like, bishop d5 is, is not quite working because knight takes c3. But um, yeah, there might be some tactics with the knight undefended. So 
Let's see what the other options are. Queen d3 or queen c2. Even a move like bishop d3. I mean, bishop d3 is perhaps a fancy option where if knight takes, then I can look to play queen c2 attacking and creating a battery against h7. I'm thinking whatever I do to attack the knights, whether it be moving the queen or bishop, black can then play d5. So something like queen c2, d5, attacking and defending. I can en passant, black can take back. Not sure how much I'm getting there. I mean, bishop d3 maybe is a bit preferable over queen c2. Because that way, I really like the bishop aimed at... Uh, at h7. Yeah, let's let's start with this. And then if d5 after takes takes, there's no more bishop on c4 that will hit uh, or that will get hit by the knight. Uh, but black goes for knight takes c3, so snagging the pawn. And now I do have a choice here. Like I was initially considering queen c2 to attack and also attack h7. But there's another option to start with bishop takes h7 which will either win back the knight, assuming king takes, or after takes, takes, there's perhaps a more ambitious move, knight g5. And this is basically a Greek gift where if the king goes back, then I have queen h5. Uh, Greek gift is exactly the sequence where you sack on h7 with the bishop, get the knight and queen in, and black might be defenseless in that position. So yeah, let's go for this. And worst case, if for some reason I'm overlooking something, I can always uh, choose to win back the knight. I guess black could consider king h8. Oh, but one thing I'm missing. Yeah, speaking of worst case scenario. Uh, yeah, I've, I saw knight g5 king moves, but the king doesn't have to move. If I play knight g5, the queen can take. And this was a bit of a blind spot because, okay, I assume just bishop takes, but my queen is also hanging. So I don't think this actually works. Like, takes on g5. If I play queen d3 to save my queen and check the king, black can then save their own queen, getting out of the attack. It's a big mess, though, because then I can win back. Then I lost a knight. I've already sacked a bishop, too. Yeah, I think I'm just better off winning the knight. It is nice when going into these sort of tactical lines to have a few different options. Now, okay, now I could play knight g5, but... I think I'll just start with recapturing on c3. And yeah, what's happening here? I um, I won back the piece. Pawns are still equal. Yeah, because black won c3, I won h7. But black's king is a bit more exposed. f6 is looking to get rid of this pawn. If I take, the queen can come in. I've also spent a lot of time already, so um, I might want to play a bit more intuitively going forward here. I mean, I could go full attack with like h4, h5. I could also castle. Like, casting is still probably the safest approach for, for my king. I think I will castle here. Just be a bit more patient with attack. If black takes on e5, then, then I can throw in knight g5. We see d6. Okay, so a lot of attackers against e5. Um, yeah, this is probably a smart approach from black. Trying to get me to take so the queen can come in. I 
I'm considering bishop a3 here. I'm not sure if I want to commit the bishop to that diagonal. A move like rook e1, just supporting the e pawn, also bishop f4. I'm also thinking, like, yeah, it takes and then develop the bishop and just try and um, complete development, get the rooks into play. Let's go for this. If the rook takes, I have the skewer. If the queen takes, uh, yeah, let's get the bishop in, connecting the rooks. And this is uh, the main open file that I like to control, like rook e1, most likely coming next. I will say, though, that my opponent's been playing well from what seemed to be a, a tricky situation. The opening seems like they have a very playable position here. But I'm going to be focusing on just optimizing the pieces, moving a bit quicker. I'm not threatening rook e7 right away because uh, knight is controlling that square. Um, but d5, I guess d5, queen takes d5. So what to do? And rook e8 is likely coming. I'm going to play bishop h4. This is um, basically a clearance move. It has a few purposes. It is defending f2, so the knight is no longer like, pinned to the pawn. And I'm also setting up knight to g5. Would be nice to get the knight in to harass the king. And this is a downside of black. Just having the pawn here, no neighboring pawns, this g5 square is in my, my full control. And if I do get the check in, it's going to be a question where the king moves. I'm going to start with this. If the king moves to this diagonal, then, then d5 could come with check. It moves up to h6, which is actually probably a safe square for it. Now d5. I really want to gambit the pawn, but I'm not seeing the follow-up after queen digs d5. I could play something like queen d2 to align with the king. Yeah, let's go for, although queen d2, there's a uh, queen f4. Yeah, queen f4 is actually very strong there. Hmm. Okay, change of plans. I'm going to play rook d1, just centralizing. If takes, I don't think I mind trading. A bishop is the bishop does look a little bit overworked here, but it's covering f2 and g5. I don't think black can exploit that immediately. And I would really like to exploit this king somehow. Oh, okay, okay. The king is trying to exploit me. King h5, what a move. Showing no fear, trying to take the bishop. I'm getting very low on time too, so um, maybe just moving the knight back. Yeah, defending, just trying to be solid, uh, blocking the battery too. And now I'm very, very inclined to punish this king somehow, like h3, g4. Maybe somehow sneak my queen in. Pawn g5. Black is throwing the kitchen sink at me. I think I can just take this pawn. Because yeah, the knight supports the bishop. And now there's really not much shelter for the king. We see rook g8. I'm going to play h4, cementing the bishop here. The bishop is very nice and just blocking the rook. It's so hard for black to remove now. I mean, the thing about this construction is it's a bit hard to get to the black king because these pieces, they don't attack the king and they, um, yeah, they make it difficult for my other pieces to get in. So it might require some patience here, but also some speed below 90 seconds. So what is my game plan? Probably getting my queen to a more useful spot. 
Like a queen's not really doing anything on c3. Maybe, yeah, maybe a bit more centralized, like queen e3. This bishop wants to come here. Let's start with queen e3. Some idea of queen e2. I'm also thinking knight h2, which is now threatening pawn to g4. Have a nice, nice backwards move. There's also the idea to maneuver the knight to f1 and then to g3. Because with the knight on the f3, it looks good supporting these things, but sometimes when you have a dark squared bishop, you also want your knight on the dark square so it controls light squares. Uh, King g6, I'm not getting my fork. Do I want to expand? Let's go for knight f1. Yeah, I, I like the prospect of getting the knight to g3. I'm below a minute now, so... Yeah, I have to uh, really watch my time. And these these games in the speedrun have been getting more difficult. I think the, the previous episode as well, I got down to around 30 seconds towards the end of the game. Um, I do have to be careful here of the g2 pawn. The queen g4 would threaten checkmate, but yeah, the knight's very good in defending. Now it seems like I'm getting closer to creating some mating attack. Uh, I'm going to kick this knight away. Something like queen d3 is a move I want to play. I'll be honest, I didn't even see this move knight c2, but uh, yeah, this is a nice double attack. Black has no time to take the rook. Can take the knight. I'm just realizing I, I had rook e7. I, I should have looked for the, the stronger move there. But uh, yeah, let's, let's go for the attack, knight f5. Get the pieces in. If king here, I'll have the fork. And it's important I made Luft for my king. Because, yeah, after rook takes, the king has a square. Um, but now, yeah, now it looks like force checkmate. Bishop h6 will come. And yeah, 28 seconds to spare. So very hard fought game. Uh, kudos to my opponent for... I think being very resourceful out of the opening and the early middle game. Um, they were very creative with their play too, like marching their king up, trying to attack themselves on the king's side. And I think it took some precise moves there to deal with the position. So yeah, just going forward here, I mean, I thought that uh, I was going to have a, an easy time out of the opening, um, especially here. And yeah, bishop takes h7, it was based on a slight miscalculation. Like, I wanted to play knight g5 initially, but queen g5 would have just been much better for black. So it's good that I realized that early enough. Yeah, sometimes when you go for these sacrifices, you really have to just double check to make sure that you're not missing um, responses from your opponent. So fortunately, I was able to win back the knight. And... Going forward from here, yeah, maybe there are some improvements, but trying to play solidly. King h5, yeah, I really wanted to punish this move. It's crazy that the, the engine here says the best move for white is knight h7, which looks completely ridiculous. I mean, it does hit the rook, but it seems like, yeah, the knight and the bishop are now attacked. Now Stockfish wants to play h3 to just prepare this move. So it's uh yeah, not a human sequence to to play for white. But yeah, um I mean I just tried to make sure everything was under control. And I like this maneuver to get the knight to g3 to complement the bishop. And then yeah, then black kind of put the knight on a vulnerable square. And when the king is so open like this, then yeah, tactics are bound to happen. So if black were to play this, then I was still probably going to continue with this move. And then, yeah, assuming the king moves back, the knight can come in. 
um, still would have had very, uh, very powerful attacking chances here. So, um, yeah, good game, a slightly stressful game. I think we'll end it there. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. If you have questions, leave them below. If you like the content, subscribe. It does help the channel grow. And stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys soon.